has happened exactly what I thought which is although the winds are from the south um, they're funneled down the liner straight down so it's going to be tacking all the way up go HMS Brecon and that's Jupiter Point at uh, the sail training area for the Royal Navy you can see the tides coming in now all the flotsam <laughs> all the flotsam we saw in the sound is now coming back up river on these big spring tides it's nice now the sun's come out it's a bit warmer um, it's not often I have to sink into the um, footwell at the back of the boat um, it was getting a bit chilly. So this is Anthony Passage and Forder Creek is just over there. And we'll go up tide of this white boy. Beautiful evening. Wind's beginning to pick up slightly. Evening breeze. Just got to be a bit careful here. A little shallow fast. Right, round we go. This will make people on Brecon a bit nervous. Hi. Hiya! You caught much? Give it, give it another hour. Give it, the tide's got to build a bit. High tide's about half past eight, I think.
you look straight along the bowsprit, you can just see the castle disappearing over the back there. Norman, just in case you were wondering. Well, it's taken us around about half an hour from down where that white yacht is to up here. And that's a distance of around about, it's around about a mile, mile and a half. So it's slow going, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Patience is a virtue and all that. There's no rush. High tide is around about 8, 8.20. So it'd be nice to get there and have tea a bit before then. You know, we can rock up at about seven, but at the moment we're doing okay. You look straight to the horizon. Um, you can see where two spurs of land meet and there's a narrow bit it's very hazy right on the horizon sort of just about there on the horizon and that's where the beach is so that's where we're aiming for so that's about just two and a bit miles it's a gorgeous evening isn't it that sun's still got a bit of warmth to it. It's very chilly under the clouds, um, but when the sun comes out, it's really nice. One or two ominous bump 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 bumps under the hull <laughs> there's a lot of driftwood <laughs> there's a whole tree coming up there <laughs> just off the point there you can see a load of geese beautiful sight Right over on the far shore there where there's two boats there is a huge colony of geese and they are so noisy bless them lovely lovely to hear right let's tap so that we don't get into all that driftwood just there there's absolutely no wind now we are just being carried on the tide. Barely any. That's Tray Down Lake. There's an old abandoned boat over there, you can see. Um, that's very, very shallow in there, according to the chart. Um, and we are now about, about two hours up on the tide. We've made good progress. The wind suddenly picked up a little bit. Um, out in the open here and it's, it's sort of um, improved things no end so we've shot along the last 
um, 10 minutes or so. Um, gorgeous evening though. And if I just come this side, that cleft there in the skyline, that is the river up to Wacker Lake and Wacker Key. Wacker Key is on the left hand point. You can go there, but it's right next to one of the main roads all the way down to Kremel. So it's um, very noisy. And Dandy Hole is just ahead of us. Um, you might just make straight ahead now, you might just make some boats at anchor. Several boats at anchor actually. It's very sheltered there, it's very popular with the big boats. A nice sheltered anchorage. Stunning scenery. But I must admit, it's getting a little chilly and I'm feeling quite hungry. And I've eaten all my cheese and marmite sandwiches. So I could do with a brew, nice coffee, and some, uh, I don't know what I've got tonight. Steak, stew and vegetables, I think. Um, so it'd be nice to get onto the beach, get it sorted out, get the, get the stove on and get myself sorted out for the night and hopefully the skies will clear. So I'm hoping I might get a bit of um, stargazing in tonight as well, which would be absolutely fantastic. Okay, the wind's fickle here, um, constantly changing direction as it's channeled down these various gullies. Um, we'll just uh, head over here a bit and then we'll have to put a big tack in somewhere in a minute. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen as I come around the point. Um, we'll have to see, see how crowded the beach is and also um, get my anchor ready as well so that I can drop um, a stern anchor so I can pull myself off in the morning if, if the worst comes to the worst. Shouldn't do that. Tide's building now, I can feel it racing me along a bit here. So Redshank Beach is on the right hand side, right around that corner. You can see that the river almost comes back on itself now on that valley. So it does a huge right angle. Um, and what I'm gonna try and do is get around all the way up to that far white boat. And then I'm gonna go straight into the beach from there, if the wind allows it. So we're almost there, we've done, we've done good now. a few boats up here and there's three or four people on the beach where I want to go so I'm assuming there's some boats already around there although I can't see masks so I expect they're rubber ribs now I've not seen that before um, but it shows you what a big spring tide it is. One of the pleasure boats coming all the way up from the Barbican, all the way up to St Germans. God, she must be a shallow draft boat. She won't be able to stop long. Okay, I've got to concentrate for a bit because it's a very, very high tide tonight. And as you can see, the water's coming right up there. And I've got to make sure I've pulled off at the end so that I can come back down. Okay, let's do a bit more boat tidying up and then we will um, go and see if my water's ready and boiling. And the brew is on and it's half past six. So there's still two hours of the tide to come in and I'm looking at the strand line behind and I'm thinking 
Yeah, it might go up to there, but um, we'll see. Um, on this beach, they've banged big stakes in. There's three of them, so you can tie up quite nicely. And I've got a stern anchor out, so I will pull her back off a little bit so she settles halfway down the beach and I'll rig a pulley line so I can retrieve it tomorrow morning without having to come all the way in. That is unfortunate. Normally it's a really peaceful, peaceful spot. Clearly the summer hasn't ed ended. Oh well, I suppose I should share it with other users. Stove's taking its time tonight, it's feeling like me, a little bit tired, it's been a long day. too tired to chop vegetables. I've got them with me. I'm just going to do a boil in the bag meal. Seven minutes. If you'll excuse me, I'm about to empty my wellies. <laughs> Another boat coming in there for a mooring. Um, there's another hour and a half to go, so I am going to be moving backwards and forwards, I think, um, on the beach. Hmm. Out of practice. Normally get that in one. Never mind. Job done and food ready and tide coming in very rapidly just enough time to eat it and then it's back on board and pulling myself out um, to uh, get lower down the beach ready for tomorrow night um, and when the tide drops i hope that's a bit more appetizing than it looks because i'm really hungry it's not bad quite warm Quite tasty, although quite frankly I'd eat anything at this moment in time. It's been a good day. It's been light winds and it's been a bit slow at times, but it's nice to come up here. Right, time to get things back on the boat. Things are um, rapidly beginning to flood here. There we go. Said that they wouldn't be staying long. About half an hour. Beautiful cruise for them though. Well, the sun's gone down, and or is going down, it's gone behind the hills, and what I've done is, um, because it's a very, very big tide tonight, um, you can see that where I was sat is, is about to be waterlogged, and we've still got an hour and a bit to go yet, so it's going to go up onto the grass, and so what I've done is I've just put a loop around the spike, and I've pulled myself back off, with my stern anchor line and hopefully then I'll dry out on the beach so that later on I can get off and just walk back up. Um, I may have to adjust it slightly um, but I should be okay then for tomorrow, getting off for tomorrow um, because it's about half a metre lower um, and that's I'm, I'm certainly a good metre and a bit back down now so I should be okay for tomorrow and I've got enough 
stern anchor out that I can pull myself off. I'm getting grumpy in my old age, aren't I? They're having fun. It's probably the last bit of their holiday, bless them, before they go back to school. Why not? It's tough enough for kids, isn't it, as it is. Well, I've had my stew and I'm about to tidy up the boat, clean it up and get the boat tent rigged and everything rigged for the night. And then I'm going to change into some drier clothes and then hopefully we'll ground out quite nicely later on so that I can um, do a bit of stargazing tonight, which would be wonderful, wouldn't it? One side of her down. It's going to be a rough night. Um, the kedge anchor is just dragging. She's just not holding me stable on the beach. I have never, ever seen such huge riptides around here. Um, and what's happening is I'm just literally drifting into the marsh and I'm on the strand line. So it's going to be a long night. Low tide is going to be about two o'clock. Um, and the only thing I can think of is just to keep getting out, keep pushing her back onto the beach um, a bit further down so that I've got enough water to get off in the morning because it's a falling spring tide and it's going to be a half a metre difference. Um, perhaps not all the way up here, but, but certainly enough. So, And then the only thing I can think of is burying or getting the kedge anchor near a rock or something like that. Definitely but um, that's the way it goes. Um, yeah, I'm tired uh, and I'm not going to sleep very peacefully tonight. Uh, nothing worse than, than um, worrying about where you're going to end up in the morning. So I'll sort myself out ready and pack away everything so that the first thing in the morning um, I can get off and, and um, not worry about it too much and then we'll head down and pick up a mooring at Hen Point, and then I'll make decisions from there. Um, high tide tomorrow is nine o'clock, so it'll be light from about six. So that's, that'll give me an indication of where we're going. Um, and as soon as I can get water under the boat, we're moving as best as we can. Well, it's just gone midnight and I'm beached. I've walked the kedge anchor out and with a bit of luck um, I've buried it in the deep mud as much as I can so I'm hoping tomorrow that will just hold me off enough that I've got a fighting chance to get off the beach. The geese have joined me as you can hear um, so I've got geese to contend with as well. It's been a long night not helped by the fact that I've forgotten that when I jumped in I'd got my car keys in my pocket and I hadn't put them in my waterproof pouch so oh, just there you go if you don't practice it, if you don't do it often enough you forget don't you anyway it's an adventure if nothing else and the sunset was good and there was some great entertainment from one of the boats I must admit um, time to go to bed and hopefully in about four hours time, I'll float off safely. Five hours time, I'll flo float off safely. Night, everyone. <laughs>